Yeah, we, uh, we, we've spent uh, a little time on both teams. Uh, yesterday was kind of Santa Clara, today was LMU. Monday was all about ourselves. We just got in the gym and, and got uh, you know, a lot of shots up and uh, you know, got a good work, up, work out in. I, I think that uh, you know, tomorrow we're, we'll practice here and then Friday morning we've got an hour in, uh, in New Orleans. And so the, that'll be the only time we get in there before we play on Saturday night. So um, it'll be interesting to just to, to, to see how this game plays out as far as LMU and Santa Clara there. Uh, and both of them are, um, LMU's had, had a season full of incomplete rosters as far as they have the very few games that they have their entire team together and Evan Payne's been out the last three or four games and um, see if he plays that'll make a big difference I think but uh, hopefully we're ready for either one we'll see how, how it plays out what that win Saturday do for you guys what did you know if you practice the same anything different or is it uh... well I, I, I think that uh, the, the, it's a, it's a, just a really big challenge to to, to you know, spend you know, the weekend feeling good about yourself and then having everybody tell you everywhere you go you know uh, how great you are and everybody deserves to feel good about themselves but the biggest challenge for us is to uh, to make sure that that's that's not the highlight of our season it's a good one but it's not that's not the the end all we've got a lot more to do and we have to play a certain way uh, in order to be successful. And it seems like we found it at times and then it went away and then we find it again. And then for various reasons, for the challenges that we had, uh, but we've been consistent with it right now and, and hopefully we can keep that going. So I, 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 feel, I, I feel a little bit anxious about uh, um, our ability to uh, continue to be consistent in a, in a season where we've seen ourselves uh, kind of play well and then things get away from us. So hopefully we can be playing our very, very best while we're down there. We need to. Does Skyler, do you think teams overlook or, or maybe underestimate him a little bit? Or if they do, they're probably not watching the team enough. But yeah, but, but it, you know, it's tough. When, when you think about the fact that uh, th this, the way this the lineup has developed, it's pretty unique in all of college basketball. You, you, you'd have to be hard pressed to go very many teams, take a look at their stats and see, you know, the, the five top scorers on a team, they're all guards. Uh, and I think that uh, it makes it really difficult to, especially when you have two or three guys that have been as consistent all year long as our guys and Ants and Tyler and, and Kyle, and then, then you get uh, you know Chase's ability to have huge nights, and then Sky is just—I kind of—I kind of—he kind of he, he sneaks in there. And but if you if you watch as close the last f seven or eight games, he hasn't been sneaking anywhere because the, the guy's been front and center. And uh, um, big big part of uh, the success that we've had. And uh, we said I've said this many times, but it, it's just one of the satisfying things of coaching is to watch your seniors play their very best, you know, basketball at the end of their senior year. So that's what he and Josh are both doing for us. Philosophically, do you like conference tournaments? Uh, I, I, it's, it's hard to say. It's all I know, you know. I mean, it started way back. I was playing, and we went to conference tournaments. And when we went to the Southwest Conference Tournament, uh, you know, we were um, – a lower seed and, and actually got an NCAA tournament berth by winning the Southwest Conference Tournament uh, one year. And it seems like most of the conference tournaments I've been in, the first rounds, second rounds are are are, are pretty nerve-wracking because you're the higher seed and someone's taking a, a shot at you. And um, But I, I think that uh, it's really good for college basketball, and so uh, I'm kind of go with them. BYU is, is usually well represented in Las Vegas. What do you think about that atmosphere down there at that gym? Uh, I, I, I actually, uh, I think it's a, um, a 
good place to play. It's, it's got a good feel to it for kind of a hockey arena. You know, we played in a lot of hockey arenas. And, uh, but uh, the way they put it together for the, for the conference tournament, it, it's got a good feel to it. And um, I, I think that, you know, the, the fan support that we get is tremendous. And, and hopefully they'll all come out for this one. I, it it, it kind of looked like uh, at one time, you know, the, the two, the two big, you know, team uh, teams with big crowd followings, Gonzaga and BYU would play in different sessions, but now they're in the same session. So it'll be interesting how they, everybody fights for tickets for those, those that, that late session. Who, who has the advantage? The team that plays the night before and is accustomed to the arena, or the team that rested? <laughs> well, I, I think that. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of up for debate. Uh, the team that's rested probably is the one that's supposed to have the advantage because they've had uh, a, a, a more successful season, you know, and so they should have a, a little more confidence. And uh, But there's something to be said about uh, the team that gets into the tournament and feels that uh, emotion and urgency of a tournament game and then moves on. And uh, I think in some cases that that kind of um, holds uh, a real advantage. An advantage enough, Jay, that uh, somehow the format got changed again this year. That the, the, those games are on Friday instead of Thursday. So. You talked about uh, looking at Corbin's development. Has he kind of developed at the rate you would have expected, or is he surprised you at all? <laughs> well, I, I think with Corbin, it's 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 all been kind of a surprise. You know, the fact that you know he, he made the decision that you know he wanted to. Uh, we talked about this a, a lot earlier. That I thought I would be dealing with that scenario in December, and it happened in the end of August or somewhere near there. And um, I, what I really feel about Corbin is that his development is kind of on track of what we thought it would be. But it's delayed because of the injuries that he had. The fact that he only got three or four days of really of fall practice. And he was hurt that whole time with a couple different issues. And then we got him playing a little bit. And then he had some, um, you know, some other issues that slowed him down. Um, I thought he could be to this point maybe earlier in the season. But when you consider the amount of time that he's had consistent time on the court, this is probably about where you know he should be. And, uh, and I, I think you've really seen uh, uh, you know, some, some real improvement, especially in the last month and a half, six weeks. And so hopefully he just continues to get better. It'll be an interesting offseason for him because you know, he's developed uh, defensive skills and uh, you know, shot blocking skills and rebounding skills. And, uh, and his offense has kind of just uh, been opportunities and when certain opportunities create themselves. And, uh, you know, the challenge will be to, to really, you know, develop that offensive side of the ball to, to get to, to where I know he wants to get to. So we'll see. Specifically as it relates to him being a rim protector, how has that changed things for you and allowed you to, to do other things? Well, you know, I talk about this all the time that, uh, the growth of this team, what I really believe is the, the, the confidence that our players have, have developed in our roster. Okay, I think we've been a really confident team the entire year individually. But I think we're developing more confidence in each other, which allows you, um, I think, to really grow. And the fact that uh, our post guys are are playing well and playing a lot of minutes, and that Corb is understanding a lot more our game plan each week. Uh, it's it's it, it's really improved our entire team just because of trust issues. Specifically for you, what do you say to your team after you have that win against Gonzaga, and all of a sudden everybody's you know talking about the bubble watch, everything like that? What do you guys? What do you say to your players when you have so much more basketball to play? Very similar to what we said before the game, which is. We, we've been here, you know, a, a, lot, a lot of times going into this tournament with a chance to, uh, to w you know, win the tournament and a chance to, you know, qualify for the NCAA tournament. And 
the only way that it works is if you win. And going down the last three or four weeks, which, you know, uh, six games ago, you know, we were in a, a really tough spot. But the only way you can get yourself out of that is to win. And then the team's done a great job, one game at a time, and uh, putting in game plans. I, I think the urgency, uh, the energy, um, the execution of our team the last couple of weeks has been way better. And, and how that, why that is and why, why I think that, you know, their focus is better and why they're um, – I, that, that's, a, that's a good question. But uh, right now, we'll hopefully be able to keep it going. Did the, uh, the WCC postseason awards kind of shake out like you expected? Well, I, I don't know if you ever expect, uh, you know, one team to, to, to have every, you know, take every individual award. But they were good. And they are good. I mean, they have what, and, I, and I think that, you know, 17 and 1 in league is really impressive. But then you look at what's been done outside the league, you know, on the national level, that uh, you know that team, they, they deserve special recognition. That's for sure. It's it's been a great year, and for them, and and you know what, the, in in reality, um, that recognition has been really good for our league. Uh, we got a lot of national publicity from uh, the fact that Gonzaga is chasing a number one seed in the tournament, and uh, I think that helps everyone in our league. What would you like uh, anybody nationally to know about the West Coast Conference that they may not already pay enough attention to? You know, I, I don't I, – I watch, you know, a lot of college basketball, and I try to compare our league to, to other leagues, you know. And uh, it, it, it's, it's – the way the game's played is nothing like the Big East. But I think it's pretty similar in ways that uh, – as far as the way it's put together, the institutions, how they represent, the travel is obviously way different. But uh, I think it's every bit as hard to win games in this league as it is to win games in that league. And uh, they, they seem to have a uh, you know, pretty good reputation around the country. And uh, I think that our league's a lot, it, it's a different, it, it's very physical and very skilled, I think, which is a unique combination. And it's, it goes from top to bottom as far as that quality, really skilled and really physical. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot.